Hey everyone, welcome to the Learn From Us Investor Academy podcast. As always, I am Seth. This is Paul. This is Andres. Andres. Or Andrew. Andrew, thanks for being here, guys. Your beard is looking great today, I, I think, uh, um, you know, we, we constantly discuss who our clientele is, who we're trying to sell our program to, and who we think we can help in this world. And I know you guys bring up these multi-million dollar deals, and I always pump the brake and say, wait a minute, my friends have 20 to 30K. Uh, we need a deal. We, I need a duplex to start with. I need a flip to start with. I can't start with a 300-unit um, apartment. So, Paul, then you initially popped right in with, well, I think you can afford, you might not know the ins and outs of what you can possibly afford. Correct. So, um, can you guys elaborate on, I'm starting, I have 25, 50, 70, maybe 100, I think 100 might even be rare. Yeah, probably. 25 to 75. How do I get going and how can you help? So, first off, part of the reason why we show the bigger deals, Seth, is... These are deals we're looking for our portfolio and our investors, but we still want people to see what we're doing and the fact that we grew from two units in 2003 and four to a thousand units now. We just sold 300 units of them and we're going to be at 15,000 units in 10 or 12 years. Starting from two units, went to eventually, you know, within 20 some years to 10,000 units. That's the reason I showed that and to show also that on the bigger scale, people are still full of shit, right? So that's yeah. a big reason. Yeah. Now, but, Andrew wants to interject. Yeah. And it, to jump and add on to that, it's kind of neat to sit there and as we work with someone to do the underwriting for a 12 unit building or, you know, even doing something I'll do, it's not different. When you're looking at a 370 unit building, you're not really underwriting it that much different than it's a 12 unit It's an extra zero. Building. Yeah. That's it. So it's, you know, that the logic that someone's going to learn now, they can carry forever and it's actually easier to manage 370 units than 37 Much. units. you always say that i can't envision that tell me because you have staff there you have a full staff there that's going to take at 370 units you have a full-time property manager you have a leasing agent or two extra you've got full maintenance crew you probably have head of maintenance they're going to handle everything at 37 units you're probably the person taking the phone call calling a person who works part-time saying hey can you go out this time on a full big property like that they're all there as their full-time job you're not going to hear anything from them so how, how do you convince someone like myself, not, not talking about the big, big projects, but how do you convince someone myself that I can indeed afford something probably more than I think I could? Well, as an example, the other day we met with um, somebody who's, uh, I imagine going to hire us to help them out. It was a couple. Um, and they were talking about the flips that they did. And I said, how did you, how'd you do the flips? So we pay cash. I'm like, oh, wow, pretty good. How'd you pay for cash? Like, well, we use a home equity line of credit. I said, oh, great. What do you own your house? They're like, well, nothing. I said, so wait a second, you guys are 38, 39 years old. You bought your house in 2005, you owe nothing? Like, yeah, we hate debt. We just paid down debt. I go, then why don't you just take, what are your house worth? They said 350. I said, okay, go take a $280,000 mortgage in your house and go buy a million dollar property. You can do that tomorrow. And they were just like, I mean, they looked at me kind of like, really? I said, yeah. Now, if you don't like debt in your house, that's one thing. And that's something we have to talk about. And the wife was very, I don't want debt. I said, well, then why are you even buying real estate? But the husband's like, listen, I'm comfortable with that. They're, they're two high-earning individuals. My guess is they make 300 combined. How'd they get that house paid off? I mean, they just obvious, paid but... every, I mean, literally, they just paid extra, extra. Every cash flow they had, they just paid down, paid down, paid You're down. You're not a big fan of that, right? No, I'm not because they're sacrificing would have been, if three, two, three, two years ago, they could have gotten a mortgage at 3%, 3.5% on that house. And now they're going to pay 45 or four, whatever the interest rate is. They're going to pay an extra 3000 a year. Why? Because they didn't want debt? Fine. But now they want to have a real estate portfolio. They could easily take that 280000 bucks and buy a million, million two building that now they have without doing anything different. They've taken a $350,000 home, taken debt on it and bought a million dollar asset with it. So not changing any extra money. They now have a million four in assets now growing instead of a $350,000 asset that's growing at $10,000 a year at best. Seth, when you've got... Let's say you got ten thousand extra dollars. If you go, hey, I'm going to pay my mortgage off. You're essentially saying I'm going to lock in my interest rate. You're paying what, the return what, on your interest rate. If your yeah. interest rate's four percent, that's the return you're getting on your money. Yeah, you got a four percent return. So the idea of putting it in real estate or going to do something else with it. Well, is, in income producing real estate, because putting it in a house is still real estate. Yes. Hashtag lawyered. <laughs> Good point, Paul. But yeah, going out and getting something, you're saying, hey, I can do better than four percent. I, I have never heard that. Um, that, and I don't think uh, a lot of my colleagues have heard the idea. I've never thought about the idea. If you pay extra on your house, you're paying yourself, you're getting 3%, 3 to 4% well, on your money. Well, it's just like the credit cards. When people tell you pay off your 15% credit cards, you're paying yourself a 15% return. 
you're saving that interest rate. That's what you're getting in return, essentially. Same so, with the house. So go the opposite way. These people were great at saving, right? Go the other way. So let's say, guys, he's saying, oh, I'm putting, uh, I'm buying stocks. I'm putting in $2,000 a month to go buy some stocks. But in the meantime, he's carrying a $20,000 balance on his credit card. He's paying 18%. Yeah, that's stupid. Right. Pay off your credit card. You're getting 18% back. You're not going to necessarily well, get 18% we, in the stock. It's funny. We were talking about it for our 401k discussion a while back. Uh, you know, I'll have people who have a $10,000 balance on their credit card paying 15% interest and they have $12,000 in their checking. And I say, well, pay off your credit card. They're like, oh, no, no, I want to have that money sitting there. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's stupid. Keep your credit card as your backup plan. Take your account from 12 to 2 and pay off that credit card charging you 15%. And you're going to save $1,500 a year in interest. That's asinine. But that's the way people think. And that's what we're trying to change here by having a different perspective of how to think about money and numbers. Can you change that couple's perspective? Absolutely. I think they've already started to change. Tim, wouldn't you agree? 100%. Yeah, they've already started to change. I mean, I think, and I told, I told, I kept repeating to the wife, if you really want to have a house that's paid off, I do not blame you. We will find another way because they're already high income earners. They're, they're smart people. They're going to be able to do it. But if you feel comfortable having debt and you feel comfortable with your jobs and careers, and you're willing to take a little bit extra risk, it'll pay off in millions down the road just by doing that one thing. I told them as a joke, that was our consultation with them. And since they live local, we met with them. And I joked with them and said, I just made you guys you know, a couple million bucks right now just by giving you that advice for free. That was, I said, oh my God, guys, you're going to buy our class because I just made you, a million, you know, literally millions of dollars. What kind of property could they take if they took a mortgage out on their house? And About over a million dollar property. What, what, what kind of property would you envision that looks like? Uh, 20 to 30 units here in the Cleveland area. Average rent, six, $700 a month. Cash flow, positive $20,000, $25,000 a year easily. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, easily. And they'll pay down debt. And in 20 years, that million dollar property is probably going to be worth a million eight or two. Their house is going to be about three fifty. dollars call it four fifty five hundred, being conservative. 550 and now they're going to have 2.2 million dollars in real estate versus before having their house paid off they're going to have 550 million 550,000 dollars in real estate. Now again, they're using I leverage. I just made them 2 million dollars. They're using leverage and, Send them and a bill. again, you've got to sit there and be comfortable with it cuz same point if they Paul if they went out and said, "Hey, I'm going to go take out a mortgage on my house and I'm just going to do flips and do those in cash." How oh, many, that, that's great. Right, but how many flips can you do at once if they that's only the have 250,000? And that's the issue. And, and the great thing about them is I don't mean to only 250, but you know what I mean. Yeah money bags over here is like throwing around <laughs> hundos. The great thing is the husband said, Paul, I'm just having a hard time with contractors, things like that. He wants the passive income. He's, I think, ready to go make that plunge. But again, when you're married, you have a partnership and the wife is a very smart professional as well. So she, it's not like she's the doting housewife who, you know, sits at home, the, honey, the husband makes the money and it's like, listen, whatever you want to do, we do. You know, she's, she's the partnership. So she's got to be comfortable with it. And I always stress over and over, how many times do I say it? If it doesn't help you sleep at night, don't do it. I don't care how much money you're going to make, but don't complain later. And they're very realistic about that. They're like, no, no, we understand completely. But like I said, they're going to go from one asset from 350 that might be worth 550 or 620 years to now two assets being worth 2.2, $2.3 million, close to paid off and not paid off. They're going to have $2 million in net worth versus 550,000 in net worth in 20 years. What would you rather have? You said, yeah, you're going to do that math for me real quick. <laughs> yeah. the, do you think they're the idea of losing sleep over something? Do you think that's coming from maybe a lack of understanding all their the back- numbers? No, it comes back from their background. They, it, you know, they expressed to me, it was funny when they said something in the meeting, I said, that's what I want to hear. Cause we always ask, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Yeah. Why are you doing this? And a lot of people think it's a sales pitch. In fact, the husband even said like, Oh no, we're in sales. We get that. It's like, no, that's not what we're asking. We're asking because we want to really understand why you're doing this. And the wife said, you know, we came from very humble beginnings. I don't, did she use the word poor? We didn't come up with much or something. Yeah, something. She didn't come up with a lot of money. And she's like, I don't want to go back to that. Understood completely. I mean, that's, that's a very genuine fear. But at the same time, they have kids right now. They do. They have two kids. But and they want to give their kids a better life like usual. But the great news is, I said to her, I said, you know, it's funny. I know people who are willing to take risks because they came from poverty because their comment is, I was already poor once. I'll be poor again. I made it once. I'll make it again. You know what I mean? So that it's a different mentality from different people. And when I said it to her, she was like, oh, that, you know, that kind of makes sense. And I was like, listen, I can't change her framework in one lunch. If I could, I'd be very concerned about that. If I could literally make her go from I don't want debt to I want a ton of debt in a matter of one lunch. I'm not that convincing. I mean, I'm pretty convincing, but just in general, you can't change that fundamental belief that quickly. Do you think they could go from zero to 60? I mean, 
just starting with you and your guidance all the way up to a 20 or 30 unit apartment? Absolutely. If they wanted to, 100%, that would be no problem. And the great news is they see the, the issues in the market. They see that it's hard for them to get deals. And, but they're, they say, well, we want, we want to be ready if 0809 happens again, which I, again, I'm not saying 0809 is going to happen again. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, nor do I care, but they want to be ready because they look back at 10 years ago and they're like, man, we wish we had this money 10 years ago. How do these two people start managing a property of that magnitude? So that's the, the real one? issue we need to figure out because they're both professionals. They have day it, jobs. They have day jobs that do very well. Um, you know, I told them, that, I said that exactly the same thing to them. I said, if it's not worth it to you to make that time, they're not ready. And they agree. They're like, yeah, you're right. You know, I think it was. I think the wife had left by then, and the husband was like, yeah, you're right. He wasn't one of those guys who's trying to be like, no, no, I can do anything. He's like, listen, I want to make sure I have the right time to do this and all that stuff. But I said to him, now's the time to learn, though. If you learn, you will do better. If you if you learn from us, you will do a lot better in life financially. And he does believe that. Question is, I think he believes that. I'm pretty sure he does. The question is, you know, where are they? <coughs> you okay there? I'm okay. You got a doctor yet? A little sniff, tickle. Sniff and glue in the parking lot. I, I got a little tickle in my throat. Have you gone to the doctor yet? Yes, I did go. What did he say? It was a different kind of doctor. <laughs> yes, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Chiropractor, you <laughs> jerk. Um, uh, so anyways, they're, I, I, I don't want to change their mind overnight. I want them to have a very thorough conversation, which they talk to themselves. And I said to them, guys, I also asked them, what's their goal? They didn't have a goal in mind. 99% of people don't have a goal in mind. They're like, well, we just want to be better off. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean 10 million? Does that mean 5 million? Does that mean 2 million? Does that mean 100 million? What do you want? You know, I said to them, guys, if you want 10,000 units in 15 years, I'll get you there. How can you say that so confidently? Because to me, everything's in your mind, right? These are two smart, professional, clean cut people. If they do a few good real estate deals and they want to have 10,000 units, they'll be able to raise money from other people. They're not losers who you're going to be like, oh, okay, listen, you got to change the way you look. No, they're very clean cut professional. They have contacts who are wealthy. They will be able to do it if they want that. I'm not saying they want that, but if they said to me, Paul, we'd like to build a real estate empire and have 10,000 units in 15 years. Okay. Here's how we're going to start. I start at 15 year mark at 10,000 units and we work backwards. Okay, guys, when you get 30 units today and those 30 units are going to do well in the year, you're going to go raise some money, small money from investors. Go do that deal. That's going to go well. Do this deal. And as you go over time, it starts to snowball. When I first got into real estate, I tried to raise a $2 million fund. I got 800000 in commitments, and it was a struggle. Struggle. Now, if we need to raise 800000 I think we could call one of 10 people, and, and it'd be a fight over the 800000 You know and, what I mean? And I think there's other people that say, no, I, I don't invest in something that small. Yeah, and there'd be other people who said, we, we, we had a deal that we were doing recently. We had to raise $5.5 bucks, and it was literally a fight between three people three groups who wanted to do the entire thing. Like don't let anybody else in. And by the way, you don't put money in either. You want the full deal. You guys manage the whole thing, but we want the full deal. Why is it so attractive to them? Cause it was a good deal. It was a good deal. And some people said no to the deal because it wasn't there. We don't want to have a rehab project, whatever the reason is. There's pluses and minuses to every deal for everybody. So Paul, you meant go back a little bit. I didn't go to lunch with a couple. So you said they didn't have a specific number in mind. They didn't have an nobody idea does. of uh, how many units they wanted yeah, and stuff does. like that. Did they have a lifestyle in mind, like a way they wanted listen, to Listen, the retire? great thing about them is they sat there and said, listen, we live the lifestyle we want to live. When you pay off your house, that to me is a sign that you're satisfied with the life you're living. Because if you, if you want a bigger house, and you don't pay off your house quickly. You sit there and go, oh, I just, I just saved $200,000. Let's go put it as a down payment. Sell this house, get $200,000, take our extra $200,000, put it as a down payment for an $800,000 house. Are you saying that's wrong? or I, it Depends what you want. Yeah. If you have everything you want in life financially then what does it matter? That's clearly the fact that they paid off their house, said they were pretty satisfied with their life. Don't bring it up. <laughs> My tummy's rumbling. <laughs> um, so I, I said that and said, hey, listen, that's because the heart of the battle also is, I think they're very long-term oriented because the fact of their house being the same house they bought when they were 20, they bought it in 05, so what would that have made them? 25 years old, they still live in the same house they bought when they were 25. And they're doing way better financially. I'm like, okay, these guys get it. These guys seem to understand like what their real long-term look is. Now, the husband has a Porsche. Again, he paid that off fast. But he has a Porsche because he likes the car. That's, that's his go-to. That's his fun little thing. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, more power to him. How old are the kids? Four and 11. Okay. 
Do you want their names too? Well, I'm wondering <laughs> how does college. I mean, if they're 27 and 22, we could talk on a different story, right? No, and they have kids. They have you know the college coming up. And they did say that they're like, you know, we'd like to be able to pay for college. I said to them, listen, flips alone, you can pay for college. They're just getting frustrated with contractors. And I told I, them we could help them with that. That's easy. That's not easy. Dealing with contractors is one of the hardest things. But you know, they said we like to film. They did six flips. They made. 20% on each one, I think they can do better than that. And that's what I'm going to try to help them with. I didn't tell them that yet, but they can do better than 20%, 15, 20%. And that's what they said they were well, getting. You said they've already done six flips? Yeah. And their partner was the contractor who moved away because he had to go to another like another small town here in Ohio. That's where he went. I, I think they have a great future ahead of them. The question is the busyness. They're four, four and 11-year-old kids, and they both work full-time. You know, she had to leave in the middle of the meeting to go to a meeting. He had a little bit more flexibility, but even him, I'm sure he's going to have, he's like, listen, she has the more strict work schedule. I'm the one that takes the kids to soccer and this and that. And we get home at seven, eight o'clock at night. It's like, yeah, it's an issue. But as Tim said at the meeting, guys, you've already done six flips. Clearly it's important enough to you. And he's like, yeah, you're right. So would you ever recommend to someone like that who, you know, just have such a busy personal schedule and business schedule? Would you recommend something as hands-on as ownership or would you Absolutely. recommend say, you know, other options to where they could invest, but where it's maybe not as hands-on? They seem like they want to be hands-on. My only comment to them was decide if you want to do it and how bad you want it. If you want it bad enough, figure out your schedule. That's it. Figure out a way that you either maybe hire somebody, a babysitter one day a week so you guys can go do all your property stuff. Go figure out if there's an, a parent who can take the kids to soccer two days a week. One parent on each side. Who knows? But if you really want it bad enough, you will figure it out. And guess what? The kids will learn a lot while they're watching you do that too, right? Like you talk about your son, I have your a, sons. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. And uh, yeah, I'm really just trying to show them. They know a lot about Uncle Paul and what, uh, <laughs> what he's trying to do. You know, trying to show them uh, there's more out there than just working that shitty job that you hate which I thought I was going to do for a long, long time. Yeah, you got out of that rat race. You keep mentioning the idea of like want, and I know we always talk about this because I'll bring things up. It's like, God, what do you want? It's like, I don't even, sometimes I don't even know. Everyone wants more. They don't know what. what Not everybody wants more, but a yeah, lot of people do. Yeah, some people are content where they are. Um, I'm interested to hear where this couple's going to go. Yeah, it'd be this. exciting. If they're, it's they're so comfortable, why do you think they want more? Because of their background, because of how they grew up. They want that security. They want that security. That's when, I, when we were in the meeting, Tim, remember? I looked at her and I said, it was like five minutes or she said it. I said, you said something five minutes ago. I said, that's what I knew. That I, I said, can you said it? But you said it sort of like offhand. I was like, that's what matters. I was like, you, you didn't have money. She's like, yeah, we didn't have money. I was like, okay. I was like, that's important for me to understand. Because I'm going to show her how that money can go make Listen, you're not going to make money from taking no, you're not going to make a lot of money from taking no risk. The point is we're going to teach them how the deals that they thought were risky because it has a lot of money are actually not very risky. If you know what you're doing, risk is about the price you pay if you know what you're doing, right? If you know what you're doing, that deal we saw before at 20 million bucks, it's still a lot of money. I'd buy it at $20 million. They're asking 54, right? That's the whole point. Like at the, at the right price, every deal is a good deal or a bad deal. Every deal is a good deal. At the wrong price, it's a bad deal. So we're going to teach them how to be able to do that. You always bring up, like, if you can figure out how you can make money, you better figure out how you can lose it. So, Well, what I say is, if you don't know how you're going to make money, you're not going to know how you're going to lose money. Yeah, so it seems, again, I, I hate harping on this, but it seems not rash. It just seems not fathomable that a, uh, a couple that uh, would have a 250000 paid off house, maybe three fifty dollars said, it would seem crazy that they could take a new mortgage out, buy a million-dollar property. How, how could that go south? What, what could happen in this world where they, they might be in trouble with all that? If they New bought mortgage, it wrong. What's that? If they bought it wrong. I mean, listen, it, when 0809 happened, we, our rents went up. Everybody's rents went up in 0809 because people stopped buying houses. Even though the unemployment rate went to 10.7%, there were still people out there who wanted to rent. Our rents went up. Occupancy started to go up. We've seen amazing rent growth in the last six, seven, eight years because of that. So the economy does affect it, but... I'm quite sure the, the U.S. government's not going to allow the Great Depression 2.0 to happen from 1929 where we had 25% unemployment, right? So what could go wrong is they overpay. Yeah, you have bad instances where, you know, someone just doesn't have a place to live. They have to go back home and live with their parents yeah. or something like that. But at the same point, what Paul's saying, 0809, everyone's calling it, it's the housing crash, right? So they left the housing crash. If, if you lose your house, you don't have the money to maybe have that $300,000 house anymore. 
Do you have the money to go have an apartment? Yeah. So maybe you're going in and saying, okay, I'm going to get a nice apartment instead. The guy who's living in a nice apartment, maybe he goes and gets the next level, a, a B level apartment. Uh -huh. And so there's always kind of a movement and shift, but all those apartments were being filled with the people who left their homes. And so when you look at this giant housing crisis, apartments were still, I don't want to say they were isolated. You know, there's always effects and stuff like that, but you know, w we stayed full. A apartment deals were affected on the ones who overpaid and had expiring debt happening. Yes. Overall, if you had debt existing on your property that you didn't have to refinance, you were great. You were going to end up the next three or four years making massive amounts of money. That was what happened. That's why now when we talk about deals being, can you overpay for a deal and be okay? Yeah. As long as you can support it financially, you'll be fine. We looked at that deal that was like neg negative cash flow in Miami. Mm -hmm. That would be negative, not negative cash flow, but it'd be very skinny to start. But 20 years later, it's still looking at 12 or 13% IRR just because of time taking over. Inflation and time really help real estate a lot. Inflation is real estate's best friend. It just make property prices go up. Yeah, not population growth, none of that stuff, that garbage. It's, it's devaluation of the dollar, which causes inflation, which causes... So you bring up inflation. It's the idea... What about those places where people are looking in the country and you see like, uh, you know, when they're thinking, you know, six, seven, eight percent uh, growth in prices from a real estate standpoint. Is that sustainable? No. So, I mean, because incomes, if incomes can't go up, six, how can expenses go up faster than incomes? If we're not seeing six percent income growth in this country, why are all of a sudden people going to say, you know what? I'm making three percent more. I'm going to go spend seven percent more on everything else. Year after year after year after year after year after year after year. Can it happen on short-term basis? Absolutely. Because maybe this pent up, you know, growth. So everything's coming back to inflation. Over a long period of time, income growth, rent growth, all are going to be very, very similar. That's, it's not ironic. It's not coincidental that Arizona has quadrupled in population. Iowa stayed pretty much the same since 1980. Yet Arizona's property um, uh, rents and values have gone up 3.5% and Iowa's gone up 3.2%. Explain that to me if it's population growth. How has one quadrupled, one has stayed the same, and yet their appreciation and rent growth has pretty much been exactly the same. You know why? Incomes have stayed the same. Inflation is the same pretty much across the country. So when you're underwriting a property, let's say you say, oh, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to hold it for five, seven, 10 years. How, do you, how are you forecasting income growth and how are you forecasting expense growth? Inflation. Both. Yep. Could it be better? Sure. It's hard enough to do a good deal, to bank on good things working out for you. Just bank on normal historical numbers. It might end up worse. It might end up better. But overall, it'll end up the same way. This is blowing my mind, man. Drop the mic. Can I drop this mic? It's going to be tough, Paul. Where's the other mic? I've got a mic. Where's we, your brother? We recently lost a mic. By we... <laughs> <laughs> it's about that big. Yeah, it's <laughs> blue. It's like, uh, Have we yeah. located that yet, Tim? <laughs> Is it at your house? Yeah, well, somewhere. I thought it was lost in my car somewhere. <laughs> You're like, oh, no, it's in the car. Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, Paul, that was great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to comprehend everything you just said. Comprehend away. I mean, I'm trying to put my, my myself in their, in their shoes and... Uh, seems like they have a lot of options they do they certainly need guidance though listen they're going to do fine with they're going to do fine no matter what they do but if they want to make real wealth we're going to be able to help them get there 100 percent. i'm not even worried about that and that's starting with flips it's starting with buying a 10 unit building if they want or in the case paul was talking about that million dollar property 20 30 units depending on what city you're in but super by the way start with four units make sure you like it if you don't like it Great. You're done with four units. If you like it, go buy a 10 sweeter. That's it. They're still young. How old are they? 39 and 40. Okay. Wow. All right, guys. Our ages. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. That was great. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be doing way more podcasts. We have special podcasts from On Location in Mexico. Oh, yes. In January. Love Andrew will be there as well. We have past podcasts before this where Paul's blathering about <laughs> <laughs> gibberish, <laughs> gibberish. And um, yeah, submit some ideas out there. If you like what, what you hear, we've been thinking about ending each podcast with maybe Paul 
singing some karaoke to us. I was literally <laughs> waiting for you to answer. You're like, when do I do my karaoke? Or uh, Paul just doing random impressions. Should I do a stand-up routine? Should I tell the joke? No. Not that joke. <laughs> the South Brooklyn Tony joke? Say it again, please. South do. Brooklyn Tony Tony joke. Go All for right. it. There's a there's a there's a kid. His name is South Brooklyn Tony. He's a eight year old kid, cute. He's in class one day. His teacher says to the class, "Hey everyone, can you use the word beautiful in a sentence twice?" So he raises his hand. He's raising his hand. Two other kids raise their hand, and she's like, "I'm not calling on South Brooklyn Tony." So she says, "Susie, please use the word beautiful in a sentence twice." She goes, "My beautiful mother wore her beautiful dress." And she's like, "Oh, wonderful, nice job, Susie. Who else can do it?" So South Brooklyn Tony's raising his hand, calling me, calling me. She's like, "I'm not gonna call on him." And she calls on Billy. Hey, Billy, could you use the word beautiful in a sentence twice? He goes, yes, the beautiful sun set on the beautiful sun, sunset, whatever. Oh, great job. Great job. So Todd fucking Tony raises his hand. Come on, call on me, call on me. No one else has their hand raised. So she goes, oh, here we go. Tony, could you please use the word beautiful in a sentence twice? And he says, yes. Last night at dinner, my sister told my dad that she was pregnant. And he said, beautiful, just fucking beautiful. <laughs> 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 it's, it's a, I love that joke. <laughs> South Brooklyn Tony. South Brooklyn Tony. South it, Brooklyn Tony. Is that offensive to anybody? Probably. Somebody's gonna be offended by that. I'm sure we'll love it. <laughs> Write that in the comments if you're offended. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for being awesome. Again, um, learnfromus.com, Investor Academy. Um, brought yes. to you by Coke Zero. Brought to you by. Don't say that. No. <laughs> oh, we can't say that. I don't. Even Not until know. we're paid. <laughs> No, that's right. We can say that. Yes. Not brought for you by. You're gonna bleep these out. You're gonna bleep this whole thing out and bleep me going Coke Zero. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You're awesome. Thank you, Seth. See you around. Bye.